broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, today we are going to be talking about the policy manual application on the application side and not on the administration side. So uh, just a few things to talk about the webinar to start. Um, everyone will automatically be muted. If you have questions during the webinar, please type those into the questions pane and that's located at the bottom of your webinar control window. And then we'll also have a designated time for questions at the end of the webinar, but you can type them in at any point. Um, this webinar will be recorded and a link to the recording will be sent out within a couple of days following this webinar um, to the people who have registered for the webinar. Okay, so let's get started. We're talking about the policy manual application today. And just an outline of what we're discussing today, we're going to talk about the benefits and features. We're going to talk about role levels and who can do what within policy manual. We'll be talking about the policy manual itself and policy manual light. Then we'll talk about local reviews, and then we'll end up with report subscriptions in dashboard. So benefits and features. Corporate-wide policies will provide consistency and continuity to your corporate policies. Location users are going to be able to view, print, and add location-specific information to those standard corporate policies that are created. Any updates to a policy are immediately visible to all the employees at all the locations. Then notifications can be sent for major policy changes. So if the corporate document owner wants to notify people of changes they've made to a policy, that person can uh, notify individuals, and we'll talk about more of that later. So policies can be designated to specific locations as well, and we'll do that through the use of business units and facility types for unique activities or processes at a location. So you can narrow those policies down to the location um, instead of having them apply to all the locations. So let's talk about user role levels. <clears throat> You're going to see our legend here. So the blue circle means these people can view. The orange plus sign, those people can add information. The green triangle, they can change information. And the red X is deleting information. So employee view role level is able to view the policies. Then you'll see location edit, location administration, region, and business unit roles all are able to view. And they're also able to add that location information that I talked about earlier. And we're going to talk and look at that more later on. Now, the corporate role level you'll be able to see can do all the activities. They can view, they can add the location information, they can change and um, they can delete policies. But they're the only role level that can create the policies on the admin side. So in Policy Manual, you're going to log into Insight Via, and you're going to go to Applications Policy Manual. So that's where we're going to go now. We're going to go ahead and go to our live site, and you'll be able to see <clears throat> that we are in our Demotop Delights demo site, and I am logged in as Mesh Bray, and I'm a corporate user. So this is my access level. 
And I have come to Applications, Policy Manual. Now when I come to this page, you can see we're in Policy Manual, and this top box is Search Options. So we'll talk about that a little bit. Um, when you first come to this page, your location may already be selected for you. But if not, be sure and come to the first box and select your business unit, and then your region, and your location. And then once you select those, the next box down is a text search. So you're able to search for policies in the grid below, either by title or document number. So let's, let's try out title. And let's say I want to search for policies that have the word hazard in them. So I'm going to select title and type hazard and click on the search button. And it's going to bring up all of my policies that have the word hazard in the title name of the policy. So I've got hazard communication, hazardous material disposal, hazard analysis. So it's going to let me search for policies based on title. I can also search by document number. So if I switch to doc number, and some companies know their doc numbers better than they know the names of their policies. So I'm going to type in a number and hit search. So it's going to bring up my policy that has that document number. And this is a number that the corporate, corporate document owner would create when they're creating this policy. So to go back to all my policies, I'm going to delete this doc number and click search. And that's going to bring up all of our policies again. So now we've got all of our policies showing again. The last drop down in the search options box is the section names. So you can look at all of your sections at the same time or you can just click one section name and hit search. And then you'll just be looking at the one section. So I selected coffee shop policies and practices, and that's the section we're looking at. And as you can see, there's three policies within this section. And then I can go back to the section drop down check all, search again, and it's going to bring back all of my policies under all of my sections. Okay, so moving on down the page, I'm going to talk about the page size a little bit. I've got mine set on 50 right now, and I've got all of my policies on one page. And to the far right, you can see there are 48 policies all on one page. But I might want to change that so that I only see 10 policies per page. And when I select 10, it's going to change my grid so that I only see 10 policies on this page. But now I have multiple pages. So now I have 48 policies on five pages. Then in the green bar, the next bar down, I'll just explain what these uh, columns are, what are in the columns, and then we'll come back and look at them closer in a minute. So we talked about the document number, and like I said, those will show up here if the corporate document owner puts a, cor a document number in. And then the policy names will be listed here in this column. Local reviewer in the last review date. The view in print for the policy. Edit and audit questions. 
Now, if you right click in this green bar, <clears throat> let me uh, take down my page size just a little bit. When I've got my page size too big, it doesn't work correctly. So if I right click, I can sort ascending or descending, which means if I, if I select sort ascending, it's going to put all my policies within a section in alphabetical order. So you'll see these go to alpha order within each section. And then if I right click, I can clear my sorting and it'll go back to the normal order that it was originally set in. Then the other thing I can do when right clicking here is I can hide and show different columns. So I can hide some columns. If I unclick audit, see this audit column here will disappear if I uncheck it. And then I can bring it back by reclicking audit. So I'm going to change my page size back to 50 because I like seeing all 50 policies on one page. And then once it sets back, if I want to see my page look like this each time I come to this page, I can save grid settings. So if I click that, it's going to hold on to my 50 policies per page. If I've hidden any of the columns, it's going to keep those hidden. And then if I ever want to change that, I can clear my grid settings here. So let me bump my page size back up just a little bit so it's easier to see because there's these two tiny icons here. And you can export your information from your policy manual grid to an Excel spreadsheet or to a CSV. So you would just click on these and it would open up a new Excel spreadsheet document with all your information from all your policies as you see it in the, in the uh, grid here. So let's go down into the grid and talk about these columns in more detail. <clears throat> so we talked about the document number. If the corporate document owner decides to uh, have document numbers, like I said, they will be listed here. And it's an excellent search function up here under your doc number. The next column is your policy name. Again, this is your policy section name. And then these are the policy names, management, employee relations, safety, coffee making policy procedure. So you can see that if the corporate document owner has also uploaded some attached files, you'll see them out here in the grid. So just showing some different file types that can be uploaded, this one is a video, this one is a Word document, this one's a PDF, uh, Word documents and PDF. So you can print those right from here from the grid. So if I click on this PDF, it'll open it and I can print it from right, right here from the grid. So the next column over is local reviewer and the last review date. And we're going to come back to this. Um, this has a little more detail in it that I want to uh, spend a little time on here in just a minute. So the next column over is the view and print. So this is where you're going to actually view and see your policy. So management employee relations, I'm going to view and print. And it's going to open up this policy. And at the very top here, I'm going to see the name of my policy, management employee relations. The corporate document owner is Amacar the document number, and the last revision date. At the top, I'm seeing my location name, and this is the corporate policy. So I'm showing you some examples of things that can be in the policy, like screenshots, um, more policy verbiage. You can upload um, 
a photo, you can insert a table, you can attach documents like we saw out in the grid. So this is what your policy will look like in the view in print area. And then you've got a printer button up here where you can print. And then the edit column is the next column, and I'm going to come back to that in just a minute. And I want to show you quickly the audit questions. Now, the corporate document owner can decide whether to reveal audit questions that are associated with this policy. Our audits are policy-based, so you can build your audit questions within each policy. So if I click on the audit button, it's going to show me the audit questions that are related to management and employee relations. You're not going to perform your audit from here, just view your audit questions. <clears throat> okay, so I'm back to my grid, and let's look at this edit column. So I'm gonna come down to a policy called COCO Practices Guidelines, and I'm gonna click on the Edit Info button here. And what this does is it allows us to enter location-specific information into the corporate policy. So I'm still at the Leticia location, and I can enter in information in each of these Go buttons that are specific to my location. So I'm gonna to go to Coco Details. And this is going to bring up a grid of information that I entered earlier. And we'll go in and take a look at it. And it's just to show you all the different types of information gathering that we can do in these Go buttons. So you can have a question where you can select multiple things from a list. You can have a drop down where you're asking the location to enter information or they can only select one item from a drop down. Or you can have a listing where you can only select one item from a radio button list. There is a date picker where you can pick a date. There is an employee drop down list where you can select an employee's name. There is a um, numeric only text box where an employee would only be able to enter a number. Then there's a multiple line text box where you can enter a lot of information. And then there's a single line text box where you can enter a small amount of information. There's a time picker and there's an upload file button where you can upload a Word document, a PowerPoint, a PDF, a photo, um, a video, any file type that you can think of can go in here. And then you've got a couple of different options for yes and no drop down or a yes and no radio button list. So I went back out to the grid where we have entered this information. You can also add a new record. So if you click Add New Record, you can come in and add an additional entry to what we just entered. I'll fill out a couple of this information and save. So now you can see we've got the original document that we entered, and then this is the one that I just entered. So we have two entries into this document. And I'm going to go back. And now the third, the second uh, Go button is a practices, Cocoa Practices Uploads. So this would be really uh, handy if you have a blank form in your policy manual as an attachment. People can print off the blank form, fill it out, and maybe you'd like for them to store the completed documents here. So in this Go button, we've got a place where you can simply upload completed documents. There's two that have been entered here. 
I can add new record, click upload file, find my document, click open. I can give it a friendly name. and save. And now I've got three records here in my grid. I'm going to go back to my Go buttons and look at the third one. This is just another example of information that can be gathered. Um, I have three entries here and I can add a new record where I can list an employee's name and products that they're trained to handle and a certification renewal date. And save. So now you can see we have four entries in our grid. And I'm going to go back. So in the COCO details, I want that information to show up in my corporate policy. That's information that's specific to the location, but I want that to be a, a part of the corporate policy so that it is specific to this location. And the same with my authorized handlers. I want those to be identified and show up in my corporate policy at the location level. And then each location can enter their own authorized handlers and their own COCO details. Now the completed upload forms, I don't need those in my printed policy. I just want a place to store them. So those are just going to be stored right here. And I'll show you in the view and print of our policy where the details and the handlers are going to be entered into our policy. So I clicked on back, so it's going to take us back to our whole list of policies. And I'm going to find our policy named COCO Practices Guidelines, and I'm going to go to View and Print. And I'll expand this out a little bit so you can see it better. This is our COCO Practices Guidelines policy, and this is the corporate verbiage that is in the document. And then this table, COCO Authorized Handlers, is what I just entered over in that, top, in that Go button for Authorized Handlers. So this is a table that can be dropped into the corporate policy, helping make that information location specific. Here's the COCO details that was already in there. And then this is the second one that I just entered today. So it's got that information and the rest of the corporate document and those uploaded documents that are also attached. So I'm going to go back out to the grid. And that was in the Edit Info buttons here. So I just wanted to show you that's where um, we would build forms for you and you would contact your account manager to help you um, with the information that you want to gather to drop into your corporate policy. Okay. Um, one thing I also want to uh, point out on the view and print of the policies here is you can also, if you've got someone that needs uh, language translation, we give you that capability to have someone on your staff um, translate the written policy into another language. Okay, so I am going to show you Policy Manual Lite, and then we're going to come back and look at these local reviewers and last review date. So I'm going to go to Applications, and then underneath Policy Manual, there's Policy Manual Lite. <clears throat> Okay, so the top drop down again is your location. So we are still in Letitia, 
And instead of seeing all your policies at once, we're going to see just the policy manual section. So your policy sections are listed here, and then you would click on a section to list just the policies within that section. So coffee shop policies and practices, here is our location name, our section name, and here are our three policies. You can see you can view and print. And the print and view light is just another version of print and view. It just doesn't have the thumbnails within. And then the files, that's your attached document. So if you click on that, you'll remember we had a video upload and a Word document uploaded. So the policy manual light is the exact same as regular policy manual. It's just a different view. And again, here's your audit questions, just like we saw in the grid. I'm going to go back one more time back to the sections. And I will show you the other policy that we looked at called Cocoa Practices. So I'm going to click on that section name. <clears throat> and we had one policy in there, the Cocoa Practices Guidelines. So again, you've got your view, print and view, print and view light, the attached files, and then here's your edit info button. So if you click on that, you'll see your three go buttons that we saw before in the other grid. So what's the advantage of looking at policy manual light? Some people just like the look of it, and it's easier to look at. Um, one of the better advantages, if you're using a tablet or a phone, a smaller device than your desktop or laptop, this sometimes loads uh, easier. It's easier to see on a smaller device, and sometimes it'll uh, load quicker than uh, the other policy manual section. So they're exactly the same just a different way, whatever you prefer to look at. I'm going to go back to Policy Manual. So I've gone to Applications, Policy Manual. And now we're going to talk about these local reviewer and last review dates. And this is optional. You can have this turned on, talk to your account manager, and ask to have it turned on. Um, I'll show you how it works here, and then we'll talk a little bit more about the functionality when we're done. Um, you're going to see there's a lot of different ways that it's listed here, and I'll show you what the difference is. So MeshBray has been assigned the local reviewer for this document. And so he has not done a review yet, so he's required to do a review. And if he clicks on Review Required, then um, he'll be able to see that these are some versions uh, that have been uh, created on the corporate document owner's side. And now he can add a new review. So <clears throat> you can see the location name. You can see the policy name. And then you can decide which, if you're doing a standard review, a new version review, or an incident review. And then you would en enter the date reviewed. And then here's your review requirements that were set up by the corporate document owner. So it's giving you instructions on how you're supposed to do the review, which would be to read the, read the uh, policy and make sure it still applies to your location. So, um, I'm just going to put some words in here for my comments. You can upload files, and it's active, and I'm going to save. So again, I'm logged in as Mesh. Mesh did this review. It's documented, 
and he can come back and edit or delete it as necessary. I'm going to go back to our grid. And now you'll be able to see that Mesh did the review on 327-2019. And it's in blue. That means it's current. And the same with this review for safety policy. Now, this third policy has not yet been assigned to a reviewer, and it's not been reviewed. So to assign a reviewer, you would click on Assign Reviewer and select the local document owner. So I'm going to assign it to Blake Bray and save. And now it's been assigned to Blake. Now Blake can come in and enter his review of this policy. So I'm just going to go down and explain some of these others. MESH has got one in red. And that means it's overdue. So it was probably an annual review, and he missed his January 1 of 19 review. So he would just come in, do this review, and then it would turn blue like the others. Now, the corporate document owner can decide not to have um, policies that need to be reviewed. So that's why these all say not required because they are not required to have a review at all. Okay, I'm going to switch back to my PowerPoint, and we're going to talk a little bit more about those reviews. So you get reviews when a, I'm sorry, you get alerts when a review is overdue, and or when a review is coming due. So what you'll get is a review that shows up on your home page on the Alerts tab, and it will be listed on your uh, grid for alerts. The other place where it can show up is within an email. If you have a current email in the system and you're a local reviewer, you will also get your review alerts via email. So, uh, when do you get these alerts? Your first alert is going to arrive 30 days before your review is due. You will get a second alert five days before your review is due. And then you're going to get an alert every day after that review becomes overdue until you go in and do the review. So that's how you get your alerts to stop showing up is to go in and actually do your review. Okay, let's talk a little bit about who, what, and why. So who? The corporate document owner reviews the corporate policy, then decides if a location review is required. If they decide that a location review is required, one person is assigned to review at the location level. This is a great idea for emergency action plan, lockout, tagout, confined space, things that are required to be reviewed annually, and you want to make sure that that location information is still current. How? How do you get this, this process started? Talk to your account manager to turn the feature on for your company, and then you would go in as um, the corporate document owner and set those up per policy. So when? The corporate document owner sets the frequency per policy. The same frequency would be set for both the corporate and location reviews. And why? Why should you do it? Well, again, it, makes, it ensures that you're keeping your policies current and relevant, uh, not only the corporate-wide policy, but also that location information that you're adding into the policy and the benefits. We already talked about keeping it current. Uh, you prepare for OSHA state visits. If it's current, they're going to say, OK, good, this is great. If it's out of date, that's not going not to look well. Um, if a major change to a policy, the corporate document owner can 
um, either force an immediate location review or he can send a change alert to everyone, every user in the system, or alert specific users. Maybe it's the safety committee that needs to be aware of a policy change. <clears throat> if you assign a lot of policy reviews to one person, um, kind of think about your process, how you want to handle it. You might want to um, consider having them all show up in the same month during a slow time or spread it out through the year so they've only got a few to do, a couple to do each month. And um, again, those local reviews can't be done from the policy manual light page, only from the policy grid. So we'll look at a couple of reports. Um, I've got them listed here in the PowerPoint, but I've also got them pulled up here on live. So there's not a, a whole lot of reports for policy manual because the policy manual itself is really a good report. So I have gone to report library and I went to location, policy manual, and the form detail export report. And this is a great report to look at if you're taking advantage of those edit info go buttons that you've uh, asked your account manager to create for you. So the form detail export report, you'll come in, pick your parameters, and then I went to the COCO policies guidelines and picked the COCO practices guideline this is that second go button that we had created and view report. So it's going to show, I'm going to click that again because I added a second listing of data. So here's the first, oops, sorry, let me get down here. The first data that I had entered before today and then the second one is down here below. So I'm going to scroll all the way to the right. This is all that data. This one was the really long verbiage that I had. Oh, sorry, keep going up and down. So your, your columns are identified here. And then the great thing is, is that you can export these to a different document if you like. Yeah, if you've got a flat file like this, you can export it to Excel you can export to a Word document or PDF, whatever you like. So let me go to a second report in Report Library. And I've come to Report Library, Location, Policy Manual. Actually, I went to Policy Manual Review and the Location Reviews. So now you can kind of see how you're doing um, how each location is doing with their policy manual reviews. So I've selected my location, a date range, and a policy or a grouping of policies. So I can see how our reviews are going at this location and maybe there's some of those policies that don't require reviews. So again, that was report library, location, policy manual review, and location reviews. Um, you also might want to subscribe to these reports. So once you have run your report the way you like and clicked on view report, then you can come up here and subscribe to it. So if I want to get this on a monthly basis and I want it in an Excel spreadsheet and this is my monthly location reviews and then click add subscription and then this report will start coming to you in an email on the first of every month. You can also subscribe others to this report by clicking this button. I'm going to hop back to my PowerPoint real quick. This is showing you how to subscribe 
to the report. And then the other thing I wanted to point out is our dashboard. Let me go back to live again. There's two ways to get there. You can try our new dashboard here, or you can go to Applications Dashboard here. So if I click on Try Our New Dashboard, Um, you can build out your dashboard here. I've got an example of it in my PowerPoint. And I built a dashboard called Policy Manual, and I added my card to show my policy review compliance. So I can see, and I selected all my locations in my company, and I can see how we're doing as a whole on our reviews. The other thing that I'd like to point out are some help, help files in our system. I'm going to hop back to live again and go home. Site changes and improvements. If this is blinking, you can click on it, and it's going to show you a blog. And we blog about anything new that we've added to our system, any improvements or changes, you'll see them listed here, and you can click on the blog to read more, and it'll go into more detail. We have help desk tickets, we have live chats, and we have help files. The help files are fairly new, a new look to our help files. Um, again, you can search by any keyword, click your arrow here, and it will bring up any help documents that have that keyword in it. You can also browse by application. So you can see many of our applications are listed here. There's policy manual. If I click on that, I'll show you many of the different help file documents that you'll find here. So if I'm going to assign a policy location reviewer, I can click on that. And it's going to take me step-by-step step through the process with screenshots, and it's easy to follow along. All right. That is the end of my presentation today, and we'll open it up for questions. You can type your questions in the panel at the bottom of the control box, and we will answer them if you have any. We'll give everyone a minute or so. All right, we haven't had any questions, so I'd like to thank everyone for taking time out of their day to join us. I hope this has been useful and helpful on the policy manual application, and enjoy the rest of your day. Uh, just wanted to say one more time, the webinar is recorded, and a link to the recording will be sent out within a couple of days after the webinar today uh, for the people that have registered on the list. Okay, thank you. Bye.